Hey, Georgia, you want to say hi? Say hi. Uh, say hi. You want to come here? <laughs> She's like, no, not at all. You want to just hang out? What are you doing? Come here. Come here. Hey. <laughs> just as a heads up, she might be hopping in and out of, of the frame. There's no, there's no promise of continuity in today's show. You beautiful bastards, welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. I hope you have a fantastic Monday, a fantastic Labor Day. Uh, because it is Labor Day, most of the team has a day off, so I'm just shooting today's show from home. So hit that like button to give some love for the dedication. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button for your daily dives into the news. But you know what? Let's just jump into it. The first up today, you could call it our douchebag of the day story. I'm calling it our absolute fail of the day today. Let's talk about this TikTok that's gone absolutely viral from Facts is Facts. And according to the person who posted this video, this happened outside of a Hibbit sports store in Illinois, showcasing an alleged would-be robber, has a bunch of Nike clothes trying to get into the back of her getaway vehicle. And I'm uncertain if, if the person just never drove this car, they didn't know where uh, to unlock the door was, or they were trying to do it at the same time that the handle was getting pulled, but the, the would-be shoplifter could not get into the car. And the situation for this woman just goes downhill at a rapid pace. <laughs> With that woman ultimately in another video appearing to then be handcuffed. Now, with all that said, as far as what else we know, uh, we have outlets like The Daily Dot reaching out to the Edwardsville Police Department for comment, with them reportedly responding that they couldn't confirm arrest details until after staff returned from the Labor Day holiday. But here's the deal. If all of this is real, right, you have an accomplice in the car that tried to get away, this woman was stealing all these clothes, it's a fail for both of them. There is no way that this woman who was abandoned by her alleged getaway driver is not naming names. It's not like there was some shootout and they were rushing away to get to safe. You couldn't figure out a lock. You go to jail too, dummy. Although I do wonder if the person in the car could be like, I, I didn't realize they were gonna steal. The moment I saw that they were gonna steal, I, I decided to leave. Yeah, actually say that. That's really your only chance here. Then in entertainment slash business news, we should definitely talk about Shang-Chi because wow, wow, wow. And that's my reaction to the movie for two reasons. The first being on the business money end, it is in the process of breaking a Labor Day record. On track to bring in $90 million over the four day Labor Day weekend, beating out the previous title holder, Halloween from 2007, earning 30.6 over four days. Also in the first three days, it has the second biggest domestic opening of the year, only behind Black Widow, but there is a key difference. With its theatrical release, Black Widow came out at the same time on Disney Plus, and a lot of people attribute that to why the second week numbers were so bad. But Shang-Chi is an example of a new test from Disney because it's not actually gonna be on Disney Plus until next month. And in fact, following the release of Shang-Chi's massive success, this morning we actually saw Sony moving up its release date of its Venom sequel from October 15th to October 1st, with Variety writing that Shang-Chi proves that audiences are still willing to head to theaters for the right movie. So just for more information on what is the future of cinema post-pandemic, like this is gonna be important to keep eyes on, but also too, as far as why I said, wow, 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 my review of the movie is it's great, it's fantastic. It has a great story, it has great acting, it has great heart, it actually has like a good, emotionally complex villain who's also badass, and the fight choreography is easily the best in the MCU to date. Like I walked in not knowing what to expect, and the but I'll just say the bus scene that locked me in. I highly recommend you watch it. Whether obviously it's your comfort level, your safety, like whether it be now or when it comes out on Disney Plus, it's a it's a must watch in my opinion. Then in other entertainment news, we should definitely talk about Jimin BTS, which of course is the group that he is a part of, and China because this new news it really highlights the evolution of the culture war that's going on right now. Right. So if you're unaware, among the other big changes happening in China right now, they're trying to crack down on what they refer to as idol worship. Also, last week, reportedly broadcasters were told that they needed to promote revolutionary culture and stop promoting effeminate looking men. Though their their wording was actually worse than that because the regulator actually said they need to quote resolutely put an end to sissy men and other abnormal aesthetics. And to be clear, the term that the agency used that means sissy men comes off much more derogatory in Mandarin than in English. But this reportedly specifically meant to target those who embrace the boy band look that's popular in South Korea and Japan. Part of the rules saying that broadcasters and internet platforms should avoid promoting vulgar internet celebrities, those who quote, violate public order and who have quote, lost morality. Also wanting places to stop airing reality TV shows or portraying admirations of wealth and celebrity. And there were already examples last week, like uh, the popular Twitter-like platform over there, Weibo, suspending thousands of fans fan club and entertainment news accounts. And now some of the most recent news focus on Jimin, BTS, and BTS fan accounts. With reports now coming out that Chinese BTS fans are being banned over a stunt that they did for Jimin. The main fan site in question, Jimin Barr being banned by Weibo for 60 days. This after they reportedly from fans raised over 
$478,000 within an hour. This is reportedly to wrap a plane for their idol. Also, reportedly, they were going to put out advertisements in the New York Times and the Times. So yeah, if you are a fan of K-pop, you use Chinese services. Know that the, the Chinese Communist Party is taking aim at you right now. And in this specific story, if one of the biggest fan sites in the world is not safe, no one is. The crackdown is real, it is escalating, and it's happening faster and faster. And while compared to other crackdowns happening in China right now, this is relatively small, it does shine a light on the general thing that is happening right now. And while, of course, with this story or anything else to talk about, I'd love to know your thoughts. Specifically, if you're part of BTS's army, what are your thoughts regarding this? And then, our final bit of entertainment news, I, I initially saw people saying, oh, the Bella Porch controversy and i was like "Ooh, that sounds like views and then i looked at it and i was like are, are we just calling everything a controversy and the answer is yes and i am also a part of that problem but uh i'm gonna treat this story as kind of a palate cleanser <laughs> even though at the same time it has genuinely proven to be one of the most divisive things that bella porch has put out or because bella who absolutely blew up on tiktok has since gone on to put out massively successful music videos she recently jumped on the adam driver good soup trend which has been done by tens of thousands of people but she did it with pickle juice or the trend showing people People dipping a finger in and then tasting their finger or taking a sip of something that is not soup but then going mmm good soup and instantly upon posting this video we saw the national and international divide show up a number of people seemingly able to type through the the saliva just oozing out of their mouth saying oh my god i love pickle juice so much and others just saying no no, how could you? It's so disgusting. And uh, as far as my opinion, I don't know. I, I like pickles. I've never actually drank pickle juice. I have a few friends from Texas that love doing a to kickle to tickle <laughs> tequila and pickle juice shots. Uh, you know, actually, wait one second. Let's see. We got this. Also, I want to say. Food, people are so emotionally involved in food. Like I, I give opinions and, and certain takes that aren't always uh, appreciated by everyone that watches me. I got the most hate from when I tried the uh, the watermelon uh, mustard. The reactions, you would have thought I spit in people's mother's mouths. All right, let's see. I kind of like it. Like it's bad, but it's good. It's like a good bad. A bad good, good bad. I can see that with tequila though. One second, need a second opinion. I need you to drink this. <laughs> Not Why? all of it. Why? It's a thing. It's okay. a, People are divided. Some people say they love it. Some people. I hate pickles. A little sip or a big sip? Big. I can't believe you're making me do this. I'm making What do it. I get out of this? What do you want? I want you to clean all the things. See how sweaty I am? I've been cleaning. <laughs> I've been working as well. Also equally hard. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know where else to put it. <laughs> so all over. Why? Why? You're a monster. <laughs> it looked good. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. But from that, I want to take a quick second to thank the fantastic sponsor of today's show, Roman. You know, Roman is a digital health platform for men that makes high quality care accessible and convenient by connecting you with a U.S. licensed physician delivering treatments from their pharmacies, all from the comfort of your home. And if you're dealing with sensitive issues like ED, you're going to want to get treatment ASAP. And with Roman, you can get a free online evaluation and ongoing care for ED, all from the comfort and privacy of your home. No need for that awkward doctor's office visit and a trip to the pharmacy. A U.S. licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan and if medication is appropriate roman will ship it out to you for free with two-day shipping the whole process is discreet and straightforward and getting started is as easy as going to get roman.com slash phil and if you're prescribed you'll get 50 percent off your first ed treatment plus free two-day shipping so just make sure you click that link in the description to get 50 percent off your first ed treatment then you know like i mentioned at the top of today's show today is labor day and to celebrate labor day america is cutting the jobless benefits of about three million people by kicking them off the extra 300 dollars a week and benefits provided by federal unemployment. And that will actually be on top of the more than 7 million unemployed people here in the States who are losing all of their jobless benefits today because of the same move. You know, the end of this program, the benefits coming at a very interesting, uncertain time. The Delta variant is surging across the country at levels near the record highs we saw last winter. In fact, in some states like South Carolina, it's already surpassed those records. But it also comes at a time where a number of people said the program it needs to end. 25 states already winding down their benefits. People pointing to the price tag, right? The U.S. government has spent $680 billion in unemployment benefits since last Last March. We've also seen $835 billion being spent through the Paycheck Protection Program. Critics of the benefits actually saying that the benefits are causing
solving the labor shortage of people actually just choosing to be unemployed, take the extra benefits rather than go back out there. Hell, even back in June, we saw President Biden saying that it makes sense for the federal government to cut off its boosted aid on September 6th. But now you have the Washington Post reporting that the White House is worried, quote, that pulling so many people off government support so abruptly could push millions of people into poverty and cut off access to food or nutrition for people caught on the wrong side of this uneven economy. With one expert on unemployment insurance telling the Post, I'm predicting a silent type of pain. If past periods have been an indicator, many will be caught in a spiral that will lead to a downward quality of life. But uh, that said, if you are hoping for a change, of course, you are probably going to be disappointed because as of Friday, you had the White House saying that there is currently no plan to reevaluate the end of the federal boost. And of course, I'd love to know your opinion on this in general, but also if you're someone that's still getting the benefits, what are your thoughts here? Then in international news, we should definitely talk about the Taliban and Afghanistan because among other news today, you had the Taliban officially claiming control of Afghanistan's Panjshir province, which up to this point was the last holdout for the resistance effort in the country. Right, if true, that means that the Taliban now has total control over Afghanistan, though the resistance effort has seemingly refused to accept the Taliban's newfound dominance in the region, saying on Twitter, Taliban's claim of occupying Panjshir is false, forces are present in all strategic positions across the valley to continue the fight. We assure the people of Afghanistan that the struggle against the Taliban and their partners will continue until justice and freedom prevails. But if the Taliban does manage to take over and hold on to this region, it could prove extremely advantageous for them. I mean, hell, the, the last time the Taliban ruled Afghanistan was from 1996 to 2001, and in that time, they never actually managed to control Panjshir. And actually, because of that, that region was the launching point for the U.S.-led invasion following 9-11. And actually, speaking of that invasion, it's now been a week since U.S. forces officially pulled out of the country. But despite that, around a thousand people, including dozens of Americans and hundreds of visa holders, are still actively awaiting flights out of the country. However, according to an email from the State Department sent to members of Congress, charter flights will only have permission to fly, quote, if and when the Taliban agrees to take off. With some congressional sources claiming that the flights are being grounded, one source telling CBS News the Taliban is basically holding them hostage to get more out of the Americans. Right, Many of these people helped the U.S. during its efforts in Afghanistan, and actually because of that, you have people like Mick Mulroy, a former senior Pentagon official who's been working to help evacuate refugees, saying, the reason the Taliban wants to prevent these people from leaving is likely because they intend to punish them for their cooperation with the U.S. With Mulroy calling the potential use of them as bargaining chips unacceptable, and as far as what the Taliban may be asking for, Republican Representative Michael McCall believes that the Taliban wants full recognition from the U.S. However, at the same time, you have the State Department and on-the-ground organizers refuting these claims, saying that the flights aren't actually being held hostage. By the way, though, negotiations right now seem to be dragging on, and it is currently unknown what's going to happen or when these people are going to be able to leave. Though, you do have the State Department continuing to promise that it will hold the Taliban to its pledge to let people freely depart Afghanistan and add it. The entire international community is focused on whether they live up to their commitments. Meanwhile, here in the U.S., it's being reported that the United States will be given incoming Afghan refugees up to $2,275 in aid, aid which can reportedly be used for housing, food, school, and other necessities. The State Department also reportedly consulting with Congress on whether or not refugees will be eligible for federal benefits, including Medicaid. But also with all this, you have people pointing out that government programs likely will not be enough, and this process is likely going to take bold businesses and private citizens jumping in to help offer aid, which is actually something we're already beginning to see. And actually, if you want more insight into that, you want to help yourself, I'll provide links down below with resources. But ultimately, with this story, I really anything else that stood out today, I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below because yes, this is a new show, but it's also a conversation. Also, while you're at it, maybe hit that like button, subscribe, do all the good stuff. But of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.